Shaparaz, tell me, what does winning this award mean to you? One, uh, one of last uh, fall, uh, fall of uh, fall, uh, 2018, when one of the reporter of BBC contacted me and told me that I was going to be nominated uh, like one, um, one of the hundred influ influential women in the world. Um, it was midnight. The only thing in that moment uh, came to my mind. I cried. It was, uh, it was my son. He had been through a lot for several months. He, he got arrested with me. Then we went to, uh, like we went to Turkey, uh, live in hiding for one month. He, he, he was afraid of police, Iranian police, Turkish police. He went through a lot. And the only thing came to my mind was, he has something now to be proud. Because when I came back from Karchak, he, he hugged me and told me, mommy, I, that, that morning he asked me not to go out. He knew about our like, movement. And he told me, I told you not to go out. And I, I said, uh, you're going to be proud of me one day. And when uh, I realized that they nominated me, uh, the only thing I was thinking was, uh, I, I, I made, I, um, um, I, uh, my, pro my promise, I made my promise and it, it became true. Uh, but when I uh, realized that, I, I never imagined I could, like, I'm, I'm no hero, I'm no, I, I didn't do anything. I was just doing that for myself. I wasn't doing, doing it for anyone. I wasn't uh, representing anyone. I was just, um, uh, I was my voice uh, in that time. And I, I, it, this is incredible. And the only thing came to my mind that I will use it. This time I said, I will use uh, like this award uh, to help other people and to help our movement and, and to have a louder voice. Great. And, you know, you spoke just now about, like, when you were in prison, were you thinking of your son? Were you thinking one day you would have a platform like this? Uh, no, I wasn't one of those brave women. I was, like, uh, in, in that cell, I, uh, like, every hour I had panic attacks. And I, I tried not to imagine my son's face. Every time I imagined my son's face, because I was banned from calling anybody. Every time, like, uh, her face w came to my mind, I was, I was going crazy and I couldn't breathe. No, I, I just wanted to, like, get out and, um, like, see my son and be in my husband's arm. That's it. I was just wanted that warm feeling. So take me back, because you were in solitary confinement. You said in your speech just now that there were you know, that in, in that in that section there were other women with me, the and, Darwish women. And, and you spoke about the inhumane conditions in there. Just take me back to those moments and, and tell me what was going through your mind. Like take me inside that room with you. What was it like? It was horrible. Um, you know, uh, during interrogation, I got beaten up badly, but before that, through like. For, uh, for body search, they, they asked me to get naked completely and sit down and stand up several times. I couldn't do that, but they forced me. And, and, uh, and the only thing that, I, in that time I was thinking about the suffragette movement, I know their story, and I told myself the things that had happened like 100 years ago, more than 100 years ago, is happening in Iran. I, I was shocked. I had no idea that it was like that. But after that, during interrogation, the, the other day, I got beaten up. I, this time when they sent me to, to, to the other prison, uh, they usually make record of all the scars and everything in your body. They didn't do that. They knew. They didn't make any record of the bruises, like of the cuts on my face, nothing. And when I went there, there were in, in that, se there, it was like uh, three cells in that section. There was other women. There were Darvish. 
And you cannot imagine, they were covered, their bodies were black, pitch black. And uh, uh, they had uh, like bruises, like they, 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 they were bandages and they didn't have any medical care during those days. So let me just understand. So you were in prison for taking off your hijab because they found that disrespectful. Yet in prison, male guards were allowed to ask you to undress and get no, no, up and down. No, it was male, no, female. Female no, guards, female. okay. Yeah. So there was, did you come into any contact with male guards whilst you were in prison? Uh, no, in, uh, during the interrogation, uh, like in, um, in Vozaro. And what was going through your mind? What kept you mentally strong? Uh, I, was, I, I, I was just uh, thinking about Nazreen. I, I, I knew that uh, they didn't let me um, contact her, tell her like about my arrest or anything. I was just uh, thinking about her and I, w I knew that somehow she would help me um, uh, like uh, to get free and, uh, and she, she also knew she couldn't do that through like uh, justice and law. So, so she brought justice to the, uh, to the public and she advocated for me. They were very support uh, and I, but I don't know, in, in, in inside prison, uh, I, was, uh, I wasn't in a very good uh, situation mentally, but uh, uh, the only thing I did that uh, uh, from after one day, I started having hunger strike. And after being on hunger stri strike, I became stronger. It was like um, the, the panic attacks like um, they were uh, uh, less than before because I was thinking that I was doing something and at that moment, I got the power because they were like uh, threatening me, begging me. They tried different like ways uh, to uh, like um, uh, make me break the hunger strike. But I got the power with hunger strike. And you know, now that you're out, and now that you have a chance to reflect upon your life and your childhood, do you see moments in your childhood that awaken the activist inside of you? Iranian, you know, Iranian women, uh, uh, they, they practice civil disobedience uh, in their daily life. For example, uh, the time that I was going to school, we weren't allowed to wear uh, like something white. White socks was forbidden. But all the kids wearing white socks, we know that we, they would punish us, but we did it. If you see the images of Iranian women, you see that they are fighting for freedom in their daily life. And that was uh, like, I was one of them. Um, you know, Iranian women don't consider the Iranian regime their representative, their government. So they try every, in every way, they try to do something to like protest in their daily life. You know, you've you've been through a lot, you've sacrificed your country, you've sacrificed your marriage. How have these events now changed you as a person? I'm not a happy person anymore. And I feel guilty all the, all the time. Because all the time that um, I, I try to like be the voice, the voice of the voiceless, I try to, to tell the world to remind the world, everybody know, Amnesty, like every, in every uh, situation, Amnesty has statements. But the United Nations, the world, apparently they don't care. I try to remind the world that these people are inside jails and these are the, the well-known people. There are lots of people in, in prisons, in other cities, in small cities, uh, but at the same time, Leaving my friends in like behind, now they are in jail, my friends. Um, having Nazreen and other human rights lawyers, Nazreen was my hope the whole time. And now I know that the activists right now don't have any, uh, any hope. That's why I talk about like uh, the law, because right now it's, it's like 
mm, two years that nobody has a lawyer or, or representative. They don't have any hope. You know, t tell us and t tell the audience, what, do you, what is your hope for Iran? What do you want to see Iran look like? Uh, yeah, from my childhood, I remember everybody wants freedom, democracy, and having no corruption. Uh, this is a corrupted country. So the only thing we hope that the other countries support the Iranian women, not the Islamic regime of Iran. Iranian people are different from Islamic regime of Iran, support the people of Iran. And if that happens, uh, we're gonna be, we're gonna have uh, freedom in our country, and we're gonna pe have peace in Middle East. And you know, just in closing, is there one piece of advice you'd give to these other women who are sitting out there, who, you know, the budding activists in their in their own right? I didn't want to be a woman, a woman, a, woman, a women's rights activist. I didn't want to be like to be active in this field, it happened. But the time that I, uh, I started, uh, uh, when I joined the White Wednesday campaign, I was thinking I just want to be my voice. I was fed up of being inactive, just uh, nagging. Whole, uh, my whole life I was, I, I was nagging. And I was like expecting the other um, women rights activists to do something for me, and uh, I realized, no, it's not going to happen. I have to do something for myself, and I have to be my voice. So uh, in that time, um, I had no idea that they were, they could be that brutal. Yeah, I knew, we knew in the news, but I had no idea that time. But I guess if I knew, uh, I was in a, like, in a certain situation, that, that I couldn't, um, I couldn't be silent. And I want the women, if uh, like they see ju un 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 injustice in their, in, their, in their home, in society, just be, their, just be their themselves and be their voice and don't wait for anybody uh, to like hand you your rights. Give it, uh, give it back yourself. Sound advice. I want to thank you for your thank courage. You so thank, thank you for your honesty thank and you. congratulations. I think your son has a lot to be proud of. Thank you. So